when we're doing a running stitch in Ethos, this is our running digitizing tool. When I click on it, it tells me that I'm working with a running stitch. The software gives you two running stitches. It gives you running and it gives you running times two. Running times two means that it's going to go around that shape twice. Okay? Running stitch. Digitizing is very straightforward. Left click puts in line points. Middle click puts in curve points. Control left click puts in curve points also. Make a mistake, press the backspace key to back up. You want a nice straight line. Instead of left clicking to put in this point, I press and release the letter O. 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 Okay? Now, a running, <coughs> excuse me, a running stitch does not have to be a closed shape. I can right click, that tells it I'm done. Remember on our fill stitch, when we would right click, it was a two part process. The first thing tells it I'm done. Next, do I want to leave my exit point right here or do I want to move my exit point somewhere else and left click? Okay, so just like with a fill stitch, right click tells it you're done, right or left to set your exit point. If you do want that running stitch to be a nice closed shape, I don't have to put a point back where I started. Tab will close the shape. Now I have to right click. Where do I want my exit point? If I want it here, I right click again. If I want it somewhere else, I left click. Okay. Now if I want a nice perfect circle, line point, curve point, tab, right click twice, there's my running stitch circle. Okay, we'll do that again. Line point, curve point, tab. Right click twice. There we go. Now, if I want this to be a heavier circle, I'll change it to running times two. Restitch it. If we look, if we go into our snapshot and we come over here to our running stitches, see here's the four that we've done so far. Well look, this circle is the last one. It's using the running times two effect. Of course it's smaller obviously than this circle here, but it has more stitches than the bigger one. That is because the bigger one has a U-turn of one while this one has a U-turn of two. That's why if you take two items, let's take this square, say copy and paste, stitch it out, look at our snapshot tool, look, 86 is the first square, 86 stitches, 86 stitches is the second square. That makes sense. They're both the same size. They're both using a running stitch. But if I take this one, change it to running times two, and restitch, look, now that one's 140 because it's going around it twice. Now, just like with our fill stitch, this tells us 
our stitch effect. This icon lets us manipulate it. Very basic manipulation on a running stitch. You have your length. Now, there's a default setting in the software which you guys can't see that tells it that any that no matter what when you're modifying a running stitch even if you put it less than one it won't do it one is the threshold right there it doesn't really matter what you put here it's not going to be below one it's not going to do it it's not going to be above four so that's your limitation is one to four. It defaults to two. Anytime you see, like when you're putting a running stitch border on really small, um, when you're putting a running stitch border on really small lettering and it's not matching up very well, it's like cutting some corners or whatever, lower this number and that will make it match up better. Okay, again, down to one is as low as it's going to go. Number of U-turns. Well, that's the number of times it's going to go around. Um, you know, one, pretty light. Two, a little bit heavier, a little bit beefier. Three, you're getting heavy. If you have to go to four, you better, you might want to think about reevaluating and deciding, do I want this to be a running stitch or do I want it to be a satin stitch? And the reason I say that is because, look, let's say I'm stitching this out, this, this shape that I see on the screen right here on a piece of fabric, okay? And I've put it, told it that I want it to go around it four times. Well, so it says, okay, I'm going to jump in right here. I'm going to go over, up, over, up, over. Oh, i got to do you four times. i got to come all the way back, back down, back over. And i got to do this four times. Now, i got to make sure and hope that, that doing all that four times, my machine doesn't shift slightly or my fabric doesn't move just a little bit because then my lines are off. Okay, so we got to think about what that you know what's going to happen there. All right, that's why if I get up to four, um, that's why if I get up to four then I think about maybe it should be a satin instead. Okay? All right. The last thing on here <coughs> is random. Random, if you put in a stitch length of two and you set your random value to 50%, then it's randomly going to alternate, sorry, between a stitch length of two. Let's go back down to one here. It's randomly going to alternate between a stitch length of two and a stitch length of 50% of that, which is one. So you can see if we zoom in on my little sample running stitch here, look, there's a one, there's a two, there's a two, there's a one, there's a one. See, it's randomly switching. There's a one, two, two, one. Okay? So it randomly changes it. It gives you an ununiformed look. People use this effect, which basically this is nothing more than a special effect. They use it a lot when they're doing they're doing things that are not supposed to be uniform. Maybe a cartoonish design, maybe a children's design, maybe an animal or something like that, where you don't want the stitches to be extremely uniform. Then you would use that's when I would use my random value. Okay. Same things apply. Look, if 
I've got some things in here that are running these items and these two items are running times two. Well if I go in here and make a change and let's just put that back to zero, put this up to four, say okay, restitch it out. Now that's going to affect both my square and my circle because they both use this stitch effect. It didn't affect this one or this one or this one because they're using a different effect. Remember how we changed it on the fill stitch? Click on it, hit our right, our right mouse button, edit local stitch effects. Now, it adds, it changes the name, running times two, underscore one. I can then make any modification I want say OK. It's only going to affect this item. See how short my stitches look in here as opposed to the other ones? OK. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Control A for Select All. I'm going to delete. We're just I'm just trying to screen up, clean up my screen a little bit. Now, here's my favorite part of working with a running stitch. And that is working with and doing what we call satin serial. Okay? Satin serial is where we start by digitizing a running stitch, and then we can automatically turn that into a satin stitch. Okay? Satin stitches are the most challenging thing to digitize because it requires a point counterpoint. Well, satin serial makes that a lot easier. Here's the way it works. I start with just a basic running stitch. Now, it doesn't really matter what my stitch effect is. All right. Using my left mouse button and my middle mouse button, I digitize my shape. All right. Now, the shape, it can either be a closed or open shape. Doesn't really matter. In this case, Let's say I want it to be closed. So once I get back around here, I press my tab key, just like we've done so far with, with punching a running stitch. But here's where it changes. Normally, if I were just doing this as a running stitch, I would hit my right mouse button to tell it that I'm closed, that I'm done, and I would set my exit point. Okay, that's normally what, you know, that's the normal process in digitizing a running stitch. But for satin serial, before, before I hit my right mouse button, and it's key that you do this before you hit your right mouse button, once you've done your shape, you press the letter F for Frank. Alright? So, you press the F key. When that happens, Notice my mouse has changed to an arrow with two little lines beside the tail. Okay, at this point, I can do one of two things. I can take any point that I see, left click, and drag. Now, at the bottom of my screen, you see how wide I'm getting. As long as I'm not above 8 or below 1, I'm good. Once I get the width that I want, I left click, hit my right mouse button twice, and there's my satin stitch. Okay? So, again, I digitize a running, When I'm finished, I don't right click. I press the F key. I take any point, click and drag. Once I get the width, left click sets it. Right click twice and generate my stitches. Now, that's the first way. 
The other way is once I'm done, and again, I'm just going to tab to close my shape. I'm going to press the F key, but this time I already know how wide I want that board to be. I want it to be one millimeter, 1 1.5, 2 millimeters, whatever. Instead of clicking and dragging, I, I've already pressed F, so I'm in the satin serial mode. I press N for Nancy. I type in my distance. Say OK. Right click twice. Now the nice thing is that it's going to remember that distance for me. So when I'm doing my next one, F key, N key, look, it remembers my distance. I don't have to remember what it is. I know it's going to be the same. Say OK. Right click twice. And there we go. Now, huge time saving tool. Makes putting if you've got several items that you can't just put an automatic border on, it makes doing that border so much easier. Just to punch a running stitch, drag it out, or, type, or hit the N key and type it out. Okay? Now, so far with the F key, you know, it's been the lowercase f. It's put that satin, the, the lines of that satin, 50-50 around that running. See, if I put this running stitch, I just put a line in here. Press the F key, click and drag. See how it's going 50-50 around my running stitch? Left click sets it. There's my satin. Okay? But if I do this same process, Tab. This time, I have the cap locks turned on, so I'm pressing a capital F. It uses my running stitch that I put in as one half, and I'm dragging the other half. Once I get it, left click sets it, right click twice. Okay. So if you've got the outside edge, you can digitize around that outside edge and then using capital F, pull it in to get the inside edge. Everything works the same. It's just a matter of whether you're going to use capital or lowercase f. If you're using lowercase, it's going to do it 50-50. If you're using capital, it drags, it uses your running stitch as one anchor, so to speak, and you're dragging out the other one. And that's satin serial. Okay? Great tool, very helpful. Much easier to do a satin stitch that way. Now, we had a question. Can I change the thickness now? Yes, I can. Click on the edge. It's got a box around it. Outlines, expand satin, expand satin, I can do the left side, the right side, or the middle. I can do it by percentage or by millimeter. Now I'm set on the middle. Once I increase this number, watch my satin stitch down here. See it increase, apply, close, there we go. Now, what if I wanted to be consistent with everything? Well, pick on this, shift, select this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. I've selected all of those. Outlines, expand satin, 
increase it, apply, close. And I've changed the thickness. Now I could increase or decrease. It doesn't matter either way. Okay? So yes, I can change the thickness.